To create a database, the first thing we need to do is to create a file where we can store all our access objects in, just like the database here. And the name of the file here that contains our access objects is up here on the title bar to the left of the colon. It's called Books. Now, if you already have a database open and you want to create a new one, you don't have to close out of the database here and reopen access to be able to get the startup screen, as you recall in earlier training videos, so you can get the templates to choose, well, one of the templates there. Instead, just leave the database open and come up here and click on the File tab, Backstage to New, and there's the templates. So you can go ahead and choose one, like if your database is going to be about students, you want to track them, and you don't want to create it from scratch. In that, it'll have tables, forms, reports regarding tracking students that you can go ahead and work with and tweak, as opposed to a blank database where it's got no access objects. So you can go ahead and click on Students and read more about it. And if you like what you see, then go ahead and create it. But if not, and you want to go to, like, let's say the first one, the blank database, of course, you can go ahead and close out of here and click on it. Or let's go to the custom web app. You got these arrows to go back or forward in the template section here. So let's go back to the first one. There you go, blank database. Now we're going to go ahead and create a blank database, and the reason why is because, well, it's blank and it has no access objects in there. So I can show you how to create a table from scratch, and then after the table, then the queries, forms, and reports. So all you have to do here is give it a name. We can go with the generic database one, but that ain't doing it for me. So we can go ahead and click inside of here, and notice the dot and the extension to the name, ACCDB. That tells the operating system what program to open up this file in. Now when you delete this and give it a new name, you don't have to add the extension .accdb. It will know to automatically add it for us, but in any case it's there. As a reminder, that that's the access program, the access DB for database. And if you want to learn more about extensions, then you can watch my Windows training video on extensions. But in any case, let's go ahead and give this a name. And my database that I want to go over in these training videos is going to be about is going to be computer inventory. Now right now it's going to be saving it to the desktop and if I don't want it on the desktop I want it somewhere else to save or to create this file in. Then go ahead and click on the browse button here and there's my desktop and in the main window on the desktop let's put it in the exercises folder so double click Ooh, along with the books that's good and then just go ahead and click okie dokie so it updates the path and it says we're going to dump it in the exercises folder on the desktop and then you can see right there how it automatically added the .accdb. Well, even if I come to the end and I delete that and I just click on Create, which is the final step, there you go, it created it. And up here on the title bar, hey, Computer Inventory, the name of my database, as opposed to the one that we saw about books, which had the name way over here. Well, now it's over to the far right. And then it's got the colon and the address of where it can be found. Now once it's created, it opens it up with the first access object ready to go. And you can see it's a generic table one. And if you don't like that, well, when you save it, you can go ahead and rename it to, well, whatever data you want to start entering in. Like if it's about computers, then this could be the table on computers. And you've got your first field here. It's called ID. Again, you can go ahead and change that. But typically it starts off with an ID, but I digress because here we just want to create a file that will store our access objects in. But it does prompt you with table because without tables you have no raw data to be able to work with, you know, with your queries, forms, and reports. So even if you close out of here and you're like, oops, I didn't mean to do that, that's okay. Next training video I'm going to show you how you can create your tables or if you left it open, how we can go ahead and continue working with that generic table and make it ours. Customize it, tweak it with that one field, the ID field. And there we go. Once we close out of that table, now the title bar updates instead of being crammed over to the far right because it had those related contextual tabs that were tied to the table that was selected. So now that those tabs are out of the way because the table is not selected or, in this case, gone, removed. It flushes far left, and you can see the name, computer inventory, then colon, and then the address. And so the address, let's close out, remember, is on our desktop in the Exercises folder. Double click. There's books, and hey, there's our database, and it added the extension. Now on your computer, you may not see the extensions, the .accdb, because by default, Windows has them turned off. I turn them on because sometimes people send me files, and it's got a blank little icon here, 
and when I double click on it the computer says or the operating system says I don't know what program to open up this file in and so it may be that it has no extension and so we need to learn about extensions like DOCX is for documents and .xlsx is for Excel well in any case you can go ahead and learn more about extensions in my Windows training video on extensions but by default they're turned off because if you do delete them like if I right click here and I go down to rename and you see how it focuses on the left hand side not the right hand side so you can go ahead and type over computer inventory but if I monkey with this over here and delete that and hit enter it says um, you're changing the file name extension and it will probably become unstable not only that but we won't know what program to open this up in if I say yes you see how it goes blank just like the look that you're giving me now like hey what's that about well if you double click on this it says I can't open this file because I don't know what program this belongs to click cancel right click on it go down to rename let's add that extra B hit enter yes we want to change it and hey it knows to tie that to that program here so when I double click on it ah, that's nice we're back to our computer inventory so don't monkey with those extensions and if you can't see them probably best not to turn them on if you want to turn them on so you can more readily identify the programs that will open up in or belong to or what version of program again you can watch my Windows training video on extensions Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel, get notified of the latest videos, and for only $2 a month, you can have access to all my Microsoft Office training videos.